Hello everybody. In today's demonstration, we're going to discuss how to send and receive coins on an exchange while using you know, SafePal products. I'm not using Binance today just for the purpose of privacy and uh, KYC. Qcoin does allow transactions without needing verification. So moving forward, I'm going to send money to the Qcoin exchange and then I'm going to send money from Qcoin exchange to the SafePal software extension wallet. So let's get started. I'm going to click on main account. And this shows the type of coins that we have currently. I personally do not support these coins. It's not an endorsement in any way. This is just meant for education purposes. So I'm going to click deposit. And we're going to deposit USDT, Tether. And then we got to select a network. I'm going to click Tron. We have limited options when using Qcoin. For example, you're not able to use BSC chain. It's unavailable. And uh, this, this is a issue for me personally, as I do use a lot of the BNB blockchain quite often. So this is why Qcoin may not be for everybody, but it works for today. And uh, keep in mind, everything that we do on here today, but let's say you use the platform Binance, it's very similar. So if you're able to follow along and understand today's demonstration, you will be able to use other exchanges. It follows the same principles and stuff you need to look for. If there's any issues, you know, you're welcome to submit comments below and I'm more than happy to answer any questions someone may have. So we have our deposit address and there's multiple ways we can use. We can use the QR code scan or we can press this copy feature. And what we need to stress is the networks. So we have to send USDT on the Tron network. If you send it on a different network, your money will be lost. It will not be able to be recovered. So please keep in mind, you have to match both wallets. So your sending and receiving wallets must always match the networks. So let's open up our SafePal extension wallet. I'm gonna set it up real fast. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Import wallet. Oh, I gotta create a password. Press next, going to scan. I'm getting a notification on my cell phone right now and I'm pressing confirm. I'm selecting what wallet and there you go. My wallet has been added. The process took less than a minute and I have all my wallet ready to go. So I wanted to send USDT to Tron. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to press send. And then I got to do to receive address. So I go back to Qcoin. I copy. I'm going to paste the wallet address to the SafePal extension. Please ensure the receive address supports TRC20 network. So as you can see here, we have our USDT tether and our network is Tron. We insert our address into the SafePal extension and it's under the same network. We're going to send 10 and then we're going to press confirm. These are from and to wallet addresses. We're going to press continue. And then as you can see here, the bottom is the Tron balance. This is the gas fee that's going to be used for the transaction. Continue. Oh, request has been sent to my phone. I'm going to press next and I enter the password, confirm and transaction has been submitted on chain. So as this is pending, we're going to discuss what to do. So what I did for our transaction, this is, oh, it's success. So that means our money is being sent to Qcoin as we speak. There may be a delay when receiving money on an exchange. It tends to be a lot slower as they process it differently. 
So, but as you can see, KuCoin has gotten the money and I have the TRX ID. Connect. And this is the transaction result success and it's waiting to be confirmed. So once it's confirmed, that means the money is sent to the KuCoin exchange. Uh, let's go check our balance. So it's reflected here. It says we got 11 USDT or $11 or value. And, but it hasn't reflected yet here. Oh, there we go. Now it has. So it took about a minute to do that. And now we have money in our KuCoin wallet. So what I, what I want to discuss before, what, what just happened, in case you're not sure, is the reason why there was no issues, because when I sent the money, the networks were the same. And that's the crucial part. If you make any mistakes and you send it, let's say, to the BNB network, the USDT, that money is lost. It will not be able to be recovered because crypto transfers are not reversible. And what I pulled up before is this is the transaction ID. So every time you make a transaction, you are given this with, with PayPal. With uh, exchanges, they may not provide that information all the time. But using a PayPal product, we will always provide this information. You can view it on the Blockchain Explorer. So this is what, it, what it's called, a Tron Blockchain Explorer. There's also Ethereum Blockchain Explorer. There's also a BNB. And any major coin tend to have their own explorer. And this is to check all the transactions. And if you, you see here now, we have a success and it's confirmed. So, and that's why you saw in my KuCoin wallet, the money received here, no problem. So if you're unsure why you didn't get the money yet, checking the Blockchain Explorer is the best thing because it's only an issue if you see success and confirmed and no money, right? If this happened, I would have to contact KuCoin to ask for an update to where is my money? Because according to the Blockchain Explorer, SafePal wallet successfully sent money to the exchange so there's no reason why the money should not appear if there's delays there could be multiple reasons why you know delays due to the blockchain itself being backed up you didn't pay enough gas fee the higher the gas fee the faster a transaction is processed generally that is the rule so those are the two major factors especially if you're using we use Tron, so it's a faster network. But if you used Ethereum, the factor of price of how much gas fee you paid can be a huge thing. So we have our money now. And now I want to send the USDT back to the SafePal wallet. So what do I do? I press transfer. And whoa, what's this? This is different. When I click transfer, it means it's transferring within the exchange. It has all the options like trading account. If I want to buy and sell this USDT for something else, I would transfer my money to the trading account and make that transaction. But we're not gonna do that today. So we're gonna exit. So what do you need to do? We have to press withdraw. Then we're going to withdraw the money we sent back to the SafePal extension wallet. So let's open up. Our extension wallet and I want to receive receive and I have different options you can scan or copy address I prefer copy the address this address can only accept assets on TRC 20 network sending any other type of tokens to this address will result in permanent loss so copy type in a wallet address and select network, Tron, confirm. So let's go back for a second. 
Qcoin actually registers that the wallet address I provided is not matching. So this is a feature some exchanges have and some don't, but it's crucial, you, it must match. See right here it says Solana and Tron. So if I would have clicked Solana and confirm, I will lose this money. And if you notice too, the minimum amount also changed. So when I typed in Tron and confirm, the minimum amount was five. But if this was a Solana transaction, the minimum amount would have been two. And when you're using exchanges, they tend to have withdrawal limits. So for KuCoin, with a unverified account, you have one BTC worth every day. If you're using SafePal products, you can move as much money as you like. So that is a big difference between exchanges and decentralized wallets. And also look at the fee structure. So I'm gonna go back to Tron. The fees is one USDT, $1. This is significantly higher than using a SafePal extension wallet or software wallet. And when you made that transaction with SafePal, we used a gas fee or minor fee using Tron. So 10 TRX was charged to complete my transaction. But when I'm using KuCoin, they're deducting $1 USDT. So they're gonna also pay the, the gas fee, but they have a higher markup. And this is due to, this is how exchanges make their money. And that's why you're paying a higher fee as a result. So confirm. And I'm gonna have it, so it's marked down. I have to do a minimum of five. I'm gonna go all. And it's subtracting the, the one. So the fee is $1 and I had 10 in my wallet. So now I only have nine available to me. But if I didn't send the money and I decide to trade, then I would have 10 USDT to buy or purchase something on the exchange. Here are some side notes. Do not withdraw to an ICO or crown founding address. Your withdrawal will be processed within 30 minutes. The time it takes for the assets to reach your wallet will depend on the chain. To ensure the security of your asset, large withdrawals may be manually processed. The funds will be refunded manually to your account in the following cases. Withdrawal to contract address failed in execution. The gas consumed exceeds the gas available in the transaction. So what does this mean, what I just read? Well, if I send this Tron back, which I'm going to in, in a few moments, it can take 30 minutes. When we were doing our transaction from SafePal to KuCoin, that was done in a minute. But exchanges do take significantly longer time. So do not worry if you didn't get your money right away and you're sending it from an exchange to outside. This is very normal. Another thing is the gas fee consumed. We're talking about refunds and stuff, but the gas fee here was charged $1 USDT. For this case, because we're using the Tron network, there is no reason why that issue will occur because it only costs 10 TRX to complete a transaction generally. And so $1 USD is way above that amount. Click withdraw. It breaks down what I'm doing. Ensure your withdrawal information is correct. The information on the picture have uniform font, color, and pattern. So, yep, confirm. Type in your trading password. I'm gonna send code to email and get a 2FA code. So I'm gonna submit the stuff and, and then I'm gonna do what's next. So just might be a little bit of a skip, but talking about this is with an exchange, there's a lot more extra steps to complete a withdrawal. So I have to create a trading password with KuCoin previously. I am getting a verification code to the email that I registered with. And the 2FA code is a Google authentication code 
that I also had to link up to KuCoin at a previous moment. So this is very normal for exchanges, even if you use Binance, for, to ask for all these extra steps before completing the withdrawal. Compared to the SafePal wallet, all I had to do was just insert my trading password and I confirmed on my s software wallet. I wouldn't have to do that extra software wallet confirmation if the SafePal extension was created. It was a separate account. But because I imported the wallet, that extra step happened. So if you wanna remove that, then you can create a wallet within the extension wallet to skip those steps. After filling in all your passwords, you'll be given withdrawal initiated. That means it was successful and money is being sent from KuCoin to the SafePal extension wallet. Safe address for future use. You can do this if you want. Uh, generally exchanges have this option. I choose not to, but you're more than welcome to. It's very easy. Just like say save address and you just type in what you want and that's it but I'm not gonna do it for this one so exit and you can see if you refresh it it should be a processing right here so you can see the transaction is processing and once it's completed once it says completed then we should be able to see it back in our SafePal extension wallet. So let's see. Received. So we received our $9. There we go. And we completed a transfer to KuCoin to SafePal to SafePal to KuCoin. We got the money, and if I refresh the page, well, it should say completed because I got the money, but we can open up the blockchain, and it does say it's success. It, it is a successful transaction, but we're just waiting it to be confirmed by the blockchain. But we got the money already, so there's just a little delay on this one, and looks like Qcoin for this transaction did it quite quickly. But again, remember, it does say Qcoin can hold and delay up to 30 minutes. So when, when you're dealing with an exchange, and let's say after 30 minutes goes by and you didn't get your money, it, you gotta confirm the blockchain. So you see it turn to confirm. So this was a successful transaction and you first check this, and if it's not there, if it says like failed or an error or uncompleted, then you gotta wait. But if it does say success and you still didn't get your money, then what you need to check is that if you sent it to the right wallet address and the right network. And if both of those are confirmed and correct, then either reset your SafePal wallet or reach out to customer support. You can find that on the, on the official website and to see what's happening at that point. And we will be able to help assist to track down what is the actual issue. But this, is, this occurs very small amount of time. As you can see, I did two successful transactions. And realistically, when you know what you're doing, you should be done in, in a minute. It, it's a pretty quick process. It's not very difficult. And yeah, so th this is it for, for today's video. You're welcome to ask your questions in the comments below or if we have a chat open, feel free to reach out and I'd be more than happy to answer any issues or requests or just general information that you want. Uh, we're here at SafePal to help. And that's it and uh, look forward to the next one. Bye-bye.